My darling Grace, this is just a little note to say I love you and to tell you that I did everything I could to arrange for us to meet and get married, but that it was impossible. Except for that, I have no regrets. We will meet soon. My other actions have been as right as I could see and make them, and I cannot wish them undone. You, at any rate, will not misjudge them. Give my love to my people and friends. Darling, darling child, I wish we were together. Love me always as I love you. For the rest, all you do will please me. I told a few people that I wish you to have everything that belongs to me. This is my last wish, so please do see to it. Love. Basically, she was the most loving and lovable person you could meet in a month of Sundays. She was just a, a lovely, very kind person, very open to talking even with very small children and listening to them and what they wanted to do and what they liked. She was, to give you as an illustration, she was desperately short of money. She never had any money. I think she was probably about the same height that I am, so probably around about 5'4". She had, in her younger time, a mop of red curls. And if you look at the William Orpen painting, you'll see the colour and the style. I don't think she would necessarily have worn it in that particular style all the time. I think most of the time she'd, she'd have just worn it tied back. But all of the girls bar one had that fairly dramatic red hair. After the arrests, when everyone, when all of the participants in the Rising were brought to Richmond Barracks, in due course, Joe was court-martialed, sorry, Joseph Plunkett was court-martialed in Richmond Barracks. Though he wasn't told it at the time, he was condemned to death. He was then transferred to Kilmainham Jail. He said that he wanted to get married. So, and he said he wanted to get married to Grace Gifford. Um, the governor agreed. A car was sent to bring her to the jail. She got there, I understand, at about six o'clock and was left hanging around for some hours before, in due course, a priest came from St. James's Parish and they uh, organized the wedding ceremony. Joe, they went to the chapel. They were, there was no actual proper gaslight. There were a couple of candles held by soldiers. The priest was there. Joe was brought in handcuffed, uh, with his hand, hands behind his back. They took the handcuffs off. They weren't allowed to touch each other in any way. The, they exchanged their vows. They were told that they were married. And then Joe was immediately re-handcuffed and brought back to a cell. And Grace was brought out of the jail. At, he, she was brought to a house in James's Street so that she could get some rest. And about two o'clock, a car came to collect her again and bring her back to the jail. They then had 10 minutes together. I'm not sure if they were able to touch each other at that stage, but they, um, there was a soldier with a clock, or, sorry, beg your pardon, a watch in his hand, and he was counting down the time. They were told they had 10 minutes. The rest of the cell was crowded with armed soldiers and they just weren't able to speak to each other. There was nothing in that circumstance that they could really say to each other. And for people who had always spent their time talk chatting and talking, that was very hard. And then she was taken away, and about an hour and a half later, he was shot.
Later that morning, Grace went back to what was her family home in Rathmines, Rathgar, that area. And she knocked on the door and her mother answered the door. And Grace said to her mother, I married Jill Plunkett last night and he was shot this morning. And her mother closed the door in her face. Her painting was a whole different issue. There was a lot of art in the family. So painting was all right. She wanted to do it professionally. The Abbey would have been simply personal. She knew a lot, she knew a lot of the people. What happened in the Abbey uh, drawings were cartoons of the individuals. When she died, she was put into the Plunkett grave because she was a Plunkett by marriage. Grace was a very committed nationalist. When the treaty came in particular, she was saying that this was a betrayal of all the men, of, the men and women of 1916 had stood for, that we needed a 32 county independent republic and nothing else would do. A lot of the women would have had that attitude. She would be pleased, I think by how much progress there has been, been in the country, as in very many regards. Free secondary education for everyone, grants for college where necessary. Young people have so much potential now, they're allowed to express themselves in so many ways. I also think she would have loved the way the children took on Proclamation Day, they put their hearts and souls, they did so much research, they took so much ownership of the whole issue of 1916. The other element that really got to me in a big way was communities all around the country which didn't have really any particular connection with 1916. They didn't have families or participants involved and they still wanted to celebrate, and I do mean celebrate as well as commemorate, the rising. When the smoke of change was rising, you pondered with your pen. Either new horizons are the same with a different name, and the answers to your question still knocks upon our door. Are the strong still richer, and are the weak still poor? There was joy, there was sorrow, there were rocky roads to follow. And dreams for tomorrow when times were on pain. There were moments of glory, thousands of stories.